Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgk.com and today we are going to learn about the loft tool in 3ds Max. We rather call it loft object because it's under uh, create compound objects loft. It's in here. Okay, this uh, loft tool is a very uh, useful tool actually. We uh, In NURBS modeling, like if we were using Rhino or SolidWorks or uh, another NURB uh, modeling program, uh, software then loft would, would be something that we would use a lot uh, up to this point because it's a very basic uh, shape creating uh, tool uh, in nerves modeling uh, but uh, in polygon modeling like or mesh modeling uh, in programs like or softwares like 3ds max maya it's a little bit less important but you will see that if you utilize this tool if you use this tool right then you will be able to create base meshes uh, very quickly in 3ds max as well Today, uh, f uh, as an example, I pulled out this box from, uh, I pulled out this image from uh, Google. Uh, it's a Dolce Gabbana uh, original perfume bottle. Uh, it's not that uh, of an organic shape, but I want to show you how to use uh, loft uh, while trying to create the shape of this um, bottle. And we are going to, uh, because it's not that hard of a, or that organic of a model, uh, we will be able to understand the uh, tool a little bit better in my opinion. So let's uh, get started with this. Uh, I'm going to hit Ctrl Shift A to leave this on top. <clears throat> this is a shortcut for pure F. Uh, let's uh, hit F to go to the front view. I'm going to create a rectangle again to decide my general dimensions. Uh, I'm going to type in 10 centimeters for length and let's input 15. Uh, sorry, let's reverse this. 15 by 10. And I want to place this to the origin. Hit Z to zoom in. Maybe pull this up a little bit because I, wanna, I want the bottom uh, to stay on the uh, bottom plane in here. X, Y plane in here. So let's go ahead and draw a line. Uh, this line will represent the uh, loft path actually. So the loft will be happening through this path. It's kind of like sweep actually. Uh, let's uh, apply a sweep modifier on top of this. You know that uh, this path or this cross section, this shape will be um, driven, let's say, along this path in here. Loft does the same thing, but what loft can do um, more than sweep is that we can choose more than one cross section. And that's very beautiful. Uh, let's say again we are still using uh, sweep let's create an ellipse shape for example for cross section and then use custom section pick and pick this ellipse you can see that we can create a, an elliptical cross section um, driven uh, create a shape like this uh, driven through the path in here we can go ahead and change the line uh, height for example and the height of the overall shape will change as well but in loft, as I told you, you can start with an ellipse and then go to a circle, for example. And then we can create these types of cross sections between, uh, sorry, these uh, types of transitions between the cross sections. Okay, so it will, the shape will go from an ellipse to a circle, for example. Okay, this is a very cool uh, tool. So let's delete the sweep and let's start with the uh, loft tool. First, I want to create my cross sections. This uh, ellipse is the first one, and then I want to create a circle. We are going to play with the uh, radiuses and stuff uh, of this, so I'm not going to go into that uh, right now. I'm going to select the line, go to Create Shapes, Compound Objects, Loft, and I'm going to select the loft tool. Now, now because we selected the line, it will treat this line as the path right away as you can see we can get the path get the shape and uh, we can input some other stuff i'm going to go through these right now uh, but because we selected this and clicked on loft it will choose the path automatically so when i go to uh, the sorry uh, let's select this and go to loft again uh, when i go ahead and click on this get shape button and click on this ellipse you will see that we have a loft created from this ellipse and this line in here okay but as we talked before we want to change the shape or uh, make a transition through the path from an ellipse to a circle 
how we are going to do this. Now, let's zoom in here a little bit. You will see this little X sign uh, along the path in here. If I go to the Modify tab, you will see that we have a path percentage value in here. If I input 50 uh, in here, for example, let's input 50 and hit Enter, you will see that the X sign will be the 50% um, of the path. As you can see, it's in the middle. If I type in 100, for example, it will be on top because it's the 100% like a uh, full uh, way or rather. Uh, if I input 75, it will be like uh, in the 3 fourth of the path. Uh, so as you can see, we can change the X signs position. Okay, so let's change it to 60, for example, and then grab get uh, click on the get shape tool and grab the ellipse again because I want this path in here to start with an ellipse and end with an ellipse. But then at this point, I want this to trans uh, to make a transition to a circle shape. So let's increase this. Let's uh, input uh, 75 in here. Again, get shape and let's select the circle. And now you will see that we have a transition between uh, an ellipse and a circle. Okay, it's very cool. Uh, one more uh, beautiful thing you can do is you can play with the uh, dimensions of these uh, cross section objects later on. As you can see, if I make this bigger, the shape will change automatically. I really love this because you can see the end result and directly input whatever you want uh, in here and see if it works for you or not uh, right at the viewport. Okay, that's very cool. So let's try to match the shape. Let's make this a little bit thinner as well. Okay. Uh, one more very beautiful thing you can do is you can go to the sub-object mo mode in here, the shape mode, and you can just select any shape uh, in here. Like we can select the circle, we can select the ellipse, and we can change the position of these as well, as you can see. Even uh, like this, or even, uh, okay, we, we have a Ctrl Z uh, problem uh, situation in here. So uh, try to be careful. We, I'm going to just pull this back to its original position. Uh, we don't have Ctrl Z while playing with these shapes. It's a little ridiculous, but it's there. And uh, ah, yeah, there are align tools in here. So if, if you uh, mess this up, you can just reset the position or center the position from here. Whatever, you can play with the shape as you can see. And let's try to get out of here and go to the line and try to change the po uh, shape of the line. Yeah, as you can see, I can just play with the line as well to change the shape. Even we can just add a new point in here. Let's hit one to go to the vertex mode, hit the refine to create uh, any vertex yeah. here, for example. Then I'm, I want to change the shape and you can see that we can create interesting shapes using these extra options. Okay. So uh, if we go back to the uh, Parfum bottle example. We can also create a. Let's use two different tools for this uh, tutorial, and I'm, I can also create uh, the uh, top part in here with a loft, right? If I uh, lathe, sorry. If I apply a lathe modifier on top of this cross section, uh, you can see that we have a shape like this. Uh, I wanna. Uh, flip the normals of this. I want to change the base shape a little bit. Let's go ahead and select this point in here. I'm going to hit one. Uh, first I'm going to hit, uh, click on the line uh, stack in here. Then I'm going to hit one. Select this corner in here. Uh, let's fill up this a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this up, this one. Then I'm going to choose this as a busier corner. Uh, let's just create a shape like this. Uh, I want to just make this smooth transition in here as well. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Yeah. Now if I uh, see the lathe version, it looks uh, a lot better. I can still fill up these corners as well. Let's input uh, 0 0.03 for this. Yeah, 
we have some rounded edges looks much better and maybe we can uh, in the end after we create the base shape we can add an edit poly modifier on top of this uh, portion here and we can just play with the shape even a little bit um, more I want to refine this shape a little bit because it has a concave uh, feeling more of a concave feeling in here so I can achieve that by editing it a little bit further and I can also for example inset this and let's uh, hit two to select these edges I, I'm going to double click on one of the edges I know that you don't know edit poly but I'm trying to make the uh, this shape a little bit more like this so this, this is a uh, general uh, modeling uh, workflow for me I create a base base shape with an edit spline uh, and a modifier then I apply an edit poly on top and then I play with the, uh, with the shape uh, even further so uh, I like um, perfectly shape uh, with edit poly. So this is a general uh, way of working for me so I wanted to show that to you uh, that's why I'm using edit poly right now. Okay, by the way let's uh, look more uh, options in loft uh, so uh, this is close enough in my opinion. Uh, let's try to create a different shape I'm going to use this line this time for, a, uh, for the low loft path and then let's create a uh, I don't know a star for example let's Play with this and then I'm going to select this one uh, this shape go to create co uh, geometric compound objects loft and I'm going to get the shape the star shape in here if I hit uh, F4 you can see that we have a shape like this uh, an interesting way of using loft is using deformations in here and it's a little bit uh, weird but you will see how it works it works with a graph so maybe it will be a little bit uh, for into you how to use it let's get rid of this for now uh, but in 3ds max in materials uh, especially you, you see these graphs a lot so let's start using them and uh, start learning about them now what you can add in here uh, the deformations by deformations uh, max means you can add a scale along the path for example you can uh, make uh, this um, shape start with a large uh, star cross section and end with a smaller star cross section or vice versa so let's uh, see how we do this uh, let's click on scale as you can see we have a graph in here and this graph represents the uh, path uh, of this line in here it starts from zero which is this side uh, probably we will see in a minute and it ends in a uh, hundred and which is uh, this side so if I pull this down for example it should scale down along the way as you can see don't go below zero for now let's see how that works and you can see that it goes down it scales down along let's uh, hit alt q to isolate this it scales down along the path okay so if we have more um, steps uh, you can change the steps or segments along the path uh, from here let's type in 10 for example you'll see a more perfect result and then you can add more points in here which is very interesting as well uh, let's add a new point new point new point and i can just pull this up and so you can see that it scales down and down and then in here it scales up again and then down again and goes uh, at the same um, angle with this okay okay as you can see we can change these shapes and it's very weird it's very interesting you can create a little different weird awkward shapes with this or uh, some shapes that make sense as well and one more trick I want to show you is very, very cool is you can right click in here and change this to a Bezier smooth uh, point which gets rid of that corner over there and you can just play with this as well uh, you can create really interesting shapes uh, this looks like a dart I guess right and uh, with this okay so this is how it works let's uh, get rid of the scale and use twist instead and let's twist this along the way and you can see that we can create something like this uh, a shape that twists or rotates along the way uh, let's use some of the other ones I, I don't know all of these actually these teeter options new I guess what it does let's check what it does 
Mm, okay, it rotates the shape uh, along a different axis, like uh, I guess. Let's uh, try to understand this a little bit further. Ah, okay, it scales down. It's in the one axis, right? Yeah, it scales down, it squashes the object in one axis, I guess. You can play with this and try to create different shapes with this as well. Okay, let's use try be bevel, bevel and see what this one does. Oh. I guess this was a little too strong. Uh, it's kind of sc like scale, I guess, but it, uh, I guess it uh, gives it or scales it with a curve. Ah, okay. Uh, by the way, this is very interesting. You can input numbers from here as well. It's in the hundred percent. You can see that from here, the points position the uh, vertical axis. Uh, sorry, horizontal axis. And in the vertical axis, you can input zero from here, for example, or one, or two, or three. And you can see that you can uh, set exact values for this one as well. So these are some uh, interesting options uh, you can play with in Loft. Uh, I hope this was useful. We can we can create a lot of different base shapes with Loft. So try to go to uh, Google and try to find some shapes that you can create with Loft and try them out. And then please share them on our uh, Facebook group or Instagram um, uh, hashtag us uh, on Instagram or whatever. So thank you for listening. I hope this was useful. If you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, thanks for listening again and see you in the next lesson.